So now we're going to be looking at using indefinite integrals and position velocity and acceleration problems. So we've previously looked at how if you take the derivative of the position function, you get the velocity function. If you take the derivative of the velocity function, you get the acceleration function. So what does that mean if I'm given the velocity and I want the position function? Yes, that is right, I integrate. So if I integrate the velocity function with respect to time, then I'm going to get the position function with respect to time plus c, our constant of integration. And if I integrate the acceleration function with respect to time, then I will get the velocity function with respect to time plus c, our integration constant. So yes, the moment we have finally been waiting for, we can work backwards. A balloon rises vertically with a velocity of 16 feet per second, releases a sandbag at the instant it is 64 feet above the ground. We're going to use A of t equals negative 32 feet per second per second as the acceleration due to gravity, but we are going to neglect air resistance. We're going to be answering some questions about this function, but first let's find the velocity function and let's find the position function. So A of t equals negative 32 feet per second per second, but we are going to integrate this function with respect to time to find the velocity function. So the velocity function is going to be negative 32 t plus our constant of integration. So we need to figure out what c is. Well, v of 0 at the instant is released has 16 feet per second as its velocity so v of 0 is going to be 16 so when you plug in 0 you will get 16 for c so our velocity function is going to be negative 32 t plus 16 alright now let's find our position function so we need to integrate the velocity function with respect to time so we're going to get that the position function is going to be equal to negative 32t squared divided by 2 plus 16t plus our constant of integration. So now we just need to figure out what our constant of integration is now. Well, we know that whenever we are at time of 0, we are 64 feet above the ground. So s of 0 is 64 feet. Remember position, so 64 feet above the ground is telling me position. So plugging that so plugging that in, my final position function will be negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 64. How many seconds after its release will the bag strike the ground? So I'm talking about my position function here. And more specifically, if it's striking the ground, the position will be 0. So I'm looking for when is this position 0. So I'm going to set my position equal to 0. So I need to solve this quadratic equation. This quadratic equation is not factorable, even after I take out my 16 here. So taking out the negative 16. It is still not factorable, which means that I need to use the quadratic equation. So, t equals 1 plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Remember, I am using 
this simplified version here instead of the original one so I have smaller numbers. So t will give me 1 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. Now this is two answers, but I obviously want the positive answer and not the negative answer. So 1 minus the square root of 17. The square root of 17 is a little bit more than 4, which means that's going to give me a negative answer. So I do not want that answer. I want the positive answer. So I want t equal to 1 plus the square root of 17 over 2 which will approximately give me 2.5615 truncated to the fourth decimal place. So I am going to have approximately 2.5615 seconds for that sandbag to hit the ground. At what velocity will it hit the ground? So now I'm going to be looking at the velocity function. So V of t was equal to negative 32t plus 16. So I'm looking at time equals 2.5615. And evaluating that, I get negative 65.968 feet per second. So obviously if this was a non-calculator question you would have left it in radical form and just plugged your radical time into your velocity function and left it and you would not have to have evaluated it. But for our purposes since we can use our calculators right now I went ahead and evaluated it just so that we can get something that we can actually comprehend and understand when we talk about time and velocity. If you want another example to look at, you can look at your book on page 254. It has another velocity position acceleration problem.